welcome to another episode of Behind the Dreamers. I'm Jennifer Loading, and we are talking to the achievers, the creators, the magic makers, and the dreamers. These are our friends, these are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. Well, I am super excited about our guest because we're in studio and she's here today, which makes this always so much fun. Um, she specializes in helping individuals and their families understand and overcome allergies and food sensitivities so they can control their symptoms, feel better, and live happy, healthy lives. So anybody that knows me knows she's speaking my language. But why is she passionate? Because she was her first client. So we're going to be talking to her in just a few minutes. But at first, I have got to do a shout out to our sponsors because we cannot not do that, right? All right, so today's episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photography. If you are a creator needing post-production, consultation, or promotion, Walt Mills is your guy. Whether short films, YouTube films, production, photography work, or a new headshot, he can help you find a solution to match your needs. To learn more about Walt and his work, go to photosbywalt.com. We also want to give a shout out to Chris Klo of Upbeat Media Productions. If you are in need of turnkey special event production, Klo is your go-to. You can learn more about him and his work at UpbeatMediaPro.com. Thank you, Klo, for all that fun. Absolutely. <laughs> we always have to have a little fun when we're in studio. So excited to welcome our guest today. Sarah Clark has been in the field of holistic health for more than 15 years and says she's passionate about helping people support whole body health through natural means. She believes that empowering individuals with the knowledge and ability to promote wellness should start at home and that natural practices should be accessible to everyone. Sarah's PhD is in natural medicine with a focus on orthomolecular medicine and herbalism, and she is a licensed and board certified holistic health practitioner. Her dissertation on dietary counseling, orthomolecular molecular nutrition, and anti-inflammatory <laughs> means to effectively support whole body health is the foundation on which she is building her health and wellness practice. Well, all the That's big, a hard hey, word. All the big is. words. You did a good job. I know. Those were big, that was a big word. There were two of them in there, weren't they? It's like, let me make sure I'm saying that right. So welcome to the show, Sarah. We're super excited to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, so we got to get this started because I don't even like know where to begin. You just got like all kinds of greatness going on here. But I guess let's take it back because I mentioned in the beginning that you were your own client. So obviously you have a little story here. And I think this is what happens with all of us when we start kind of traveling. Now, I am nowhere near where you are in this. But I think we all have stories, right, that kind of lead us into investigating and kind of moving into that path. So talk to us a little bit about that. We do. So um, I was a little slow when it came to uncovering really what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I just, I didn't take the hints. Um, it, so I got in a car accident, which I mean, you know, all of us do, and um, injured my lower back. And the only relief that I found, keep in mind this is in like the late 1990s, early 2000s, so a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. But, um, you know, natural medicine really wasn't a thing. It was like, you know, woo woo, new age, like mumbo jumbo. But um, I found this amazing, holistic practitioner um, in DC who helped me helped treat my back pain naturally and I was like well this is amazing because I didn't want to be you know stuck on the like the painkiller or treadmill for the rest of my life um, fast forward to uh, just really not feeling great like my first job out of college was with a um, health and wellness company who was a little ahead of their time but it just really it really really made sense to me and when um, I quit my sales job because I was not really a good salesperson I just moved back to DC and like what am I gonna do and I was like you know like health and wellness like makes a lot of sense to me and um, you know I'd had this great um I'd had this great experience with this amazing lady in DC and I was like and that's what I want to do but again like back then it wasn't easy to find it's not like you could go online and take a class there wasn't um you know there weren't universities offering this so I really started cobbling together my own program and um then I um, you know, I studied Reiki, I studied, you know, East and West and everything in between, like you new know, nutrition and really, really loved it, but got a little waylaid, fell in love, got married, moved to India, continued my studies, but um, really uh, just kind of like, you know, again, took a sidestep. I wasn't getting the picture here, like, look, you know, here's this amazing journey for you to go on. And I sure. was like, I was really myopic. Um, had our second son. And it turns out he had an immune deficiency. Mm. They're really, long story short, he had immune deficiency. And um, at 18 months, his doctor looked at him and he's like, you're going to need to come up with a plan B. Like, you know, your son cannot be on antibiotics forever. And there's going to come a time in the not too distant future, they're not going to work. And I'm, you know, 
like oh. it's just terrified. So yeah. I really started to dig in and um, just as a mom, uh, just research like you know what can I do? What can I you know what can I use? When Western medicine, Western 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 medicine, <laughs> it's like the word from the <laughs> exactly. It wasn't coming it's out. Almost, almost could be a tongue twister, right? <laughs> um, wasn't going to work for me, and um, that really started me on my journey. Luckily, I was in one of the most amazing places in the world, DC. You know, I had all the universities and Library of Congress and everything. Because again, I'm a little old school. You know, I wasn't going on to Google. Um, is still kind of dial up, but um, yeah. Yes, yeah. So um, yeah, that really kind of started me on my journey, and it was just a slippery slope from there. And then, you know, I people would hear my story and reach out to me and like, you know, yeah, you know, my son has digestive issues or my son has an immune deficiency. Like, what can I do? And yeah. um, at that point, I figured, you know, I might as well try to again, like, you know, cobble together some sort of like respectable. Um, profession and uh, really credentials so mm-hmm. that people would, you know, take me seriously and wouldn't be like, oh, is, I've been asked, is that witchcraft? Is that like, you know, woo woo? I'm like, no, <laughs> it's nutrition. It's food as medicine. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So ended up getting my PhD and. Wow. Yeah. I like that you said that food is medicine. I mean, well, and you're right. I think on so many respects with this, because there is a lot of, People don't really understand the connection between food and the body. I mean, they, you know, they think of it as, oh, we eat, but they don't really understand other than it makes you overweight or not overweight beyond Mm -hmm. that, like the inflammation and all the other pieces that go Mm -hmm. into that. And you're right. I think like when you have something happen, it forces you to go. I mean, it's like we were talking in the previous show, like when you get kind of sort of pinned against the wall, it happened to be in business. This is in health, right? Mm -hmm. Um, when you get pinned against a wall and then you have to look at another way of doing something Mm -hmm. because you realize the current path you're on, you can't continue. It's going to run its course. And what are you going to do beyond that? So I think you hit on something there. Um, It's good stuff. I'm like processing all this because I'm like, yeah, I just, I remember going through this journey when, you know, when I was doing my stuff. But even before that, when my daughter, my oldest is now 26 and married, when she was in her middle school I want to say eighth grade, Mm -hmm. she developed some kind of digestive disorder. And this was back at the time when gluten really wasn't a talked about conversation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because you've gone through this, even like we were talking about keto and all these were conversations that nobody was really having. Mm -hmm. And I remember at that time we were being in and out of the GI doctor with her and they put her on Bentol and they didn't know what to do. I mean, it was, I was picking her up from school almost every week with severe stomach cramps. She couldn't Mm -hmm. hold any food down. They were going and testing her. They couldn't find anything. And we ended up, what happened was, is I, at some point, started thinking, this has got to be some kind of food problem. And so I started doing elimination diet on my own. I started mm-hmm. doing it with her on my own. And, and slowly, we pulled the gluten out. And it was crazy because we would go into restaurants, you know, like going to Chili's, for instance, and say, I want a salad. Or, you know, they'd bring the salad. And there'd be croutons, croutons. on the salad. Yes. And I'm like, you clearly don't know what the, now people know much more about gluten, right? But it ended up, she got better. And I I don't know, I mean, I don't know if she's doing it now, but she got better. And I don't know if she just got like a digestive issue. And like we talked about the protein, Mm -hmm. somewhere the body was rejecting the gluten in her body. Because once we took her off of that, it was a little while, but she started healing again and was Mm -hmm. able to eat her food again and get back to being you know, Kara being normal Mm -hmm. again, but that was a journey. I mean, it was hard and and doctors, I would go in and I would talk to a pediatrician and they'd be like, you know, if we get her tested, if they don't have celiac, they can't have a gluten intolerance or anything. You know, if they don't have something that's written on a blood test and it comes back specifically (laughs) saying you have this, you can't have an intolerance. You have to be completely allergic to it, you know? And so yes, I'm sure you're, you get a lot of that in your practice. I do. We, um, it's, it's really it's amazing because the body reacts to foods that you know cause digestive upset in really in three different ways so you touched on the first one which is a food allergy and mm-hmm. most people are really familiar with that because and they go straight to like you know an anaphylactic response you right. know it could be um, you know eggs or shrimp or peanuts and so that's, that's very much like a type a immune response but then you can also have a food sensitivity which is also an immune response but you're your body recognizes it as a threat, but it's not so immediate, and it's definitely not um, its not as dire. But, you know, it could take anywhere from, like, one hour to, like, eight hours to really, like, make you sick. And then there are food intolerances. Now, those are a lot harder to pinpoint, right. um, and it's a lot of food journaling, and it is a lot of, uh, you know, an elimination diet just to figure out, like, if you feel better. But 
like the biggest question I get is like, how, you know, how long until I'm going to feel better? And right. like the answer is like truly, I don't know. Like you know, mm-hmm. this didn't happen immediately, and and there's no pill I can give you because we need the body to, you know, to heal and to get back to, um, get back to balance. You know, get yeah. back to homeostasis. And, um, but yeah, like addressing all three of those, it can make such a difference. And not only like how you feel, but like how children. Uh, perform academically in school mm-hmm. and um in, in in sports and just really in life so yeah i yeah. do it's my that's it. passionate yeah and that's a good point too because i feel i feel like that's the same question we get in coaching you know when people say like how long is it going to take me to master this and really we don't know it's how you come yeah. to the table and what you decide to do with the tools that you're yeah. given when you walk away but i'm a big believer that and i've said this and we said it in the previous show that how you show up in one area of your life is how you really show up in all areas yep. and your health is really, you know, it's it's not even all of it, it. It's a manifestation of a lot of things. So you're kind of touching upon that. You know, there's you got a lot of factors going into place. You talked about environmental, but you've also mm-hmm. got, you know, your sleep habits and you've got yes. stress habits and you've got even, the, you know, I pin it down to even to the p- type of people that you're hanging around. Like, who mm-hmm. are the influences that yeah. are living either in your life every day and are they adding stress mm-hmm. or are they adding value, you know? And so yeah. there's a lot of pieces that go to this. So you're right. There is no... I can give you this. It's going to take six months to do this. I can tell you, you'll probably be recovering. I don't know to what degree, hopefully, right? We hope that you're improving, but yep. to what degree, we don't really know. So I like that because I, I think it's it's being honest, right? It, it's being, it's being yeah. forward. It is. And I'm so glad you said sleep because so not only like what you eat, obviously, is, is incredibly important, but just when you sleep, you know, when, um, you know, people are familiar with like REM and like mm-hmm. non-REM sleep, but when you slip into that non-REM sleep, that's when your body heals. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's when the, um, the intestines, you know, they help the body with like, you know, hormones and the stress hormone and, um, like brain function and emotion. It's, there's so many things that go into that recovery time. You know, people and the humans are the only, literally the only creatures in the world that actively put off sleep. And I do it too. I'm like, oh, if I could do one more load of dishes or one more load of laundry or, you know, I could just write, you know, a couple more things. And we, like, we never get the chance to make up that sleep because your body doesn't have the chance to heal. And so um, I didn't understand, you know, years ago when like, you know, you you never, you know, you can never make up sleep. You can Mm -hmm. never, you know, uh, stockpile sleep. And um, it's true. And sleep is such a huge factor. And it's one of the first things I'll ask you if you sit down next to me, like, so... How are you sleeping? Yeah, tell me about your sleeping. <laughs> exactly. It is important. I agree with you. And you're so right. You know, it's making me think right now, and this is funny because I, I talk about exercise like this. Like, what animal doesn't really, like, if you think about your dogs right now, like, my dogs wake up every morning and they want to walk every single mm-hmm. day. There's never mm-hmm. a day they get up and they go, eh, don't feel like it today. <laughs> Didn't sleep enough last night. Yep. But we as humans... Well, now we're going to get out of the reptilian brain that we talked about in the yeah. pa- the previous podcast. The other part of our pro- brain goes, eh, I don't want to do that. Reptilian brain wants you. The other part says, no, no, no. I don't feel like doing mm-hmm. that today. I'm tired. You know? It's like yeah. we're, we do. We, we rationalize other things and to, to take away from the things we really need to be doing to yeah. heal our bodies and make, make ourselves be better. Yes, because our body is telling us this is, you know, our body is telling us we're tired. Yeah. You know, it's time to go to sleep. And we're like, yeah, no. And we're like, I got, goal, <laughs> I got goals to meet. I don't have time to sleep today. <laughs> Right, that's yeah. the goal side of it us. Is. It's the driven side of us says you got stuff to do. You and I'm the same way. Like I'm like I get up at the same time every morning. Mm-hmm. I'm up at five a.m. every single morning. Bedtime, I, I try. I don't I don't do a full eight hours because I never have enough time to do it. I, I mm-hmm. say I never have enough time to do it. Yep. You know, but I'm but it's like because I would be like I got one more load of dishes to do. I've got mm-hmm. one more video I need to watch for this program I'm doing, or yep. like, I need to plan my day tomorrow. There's you know? always something. That's yeah. with my industry. It's like I've never. I've never, I don't feel like I've ever gotten a good night's sleep oh, yeah, because there's there's some shows where I'm working literally 36 hours straight. Yeah. And then there's times where, like, for instance, this morning I had to be at Globe Life at 8 a.m., came straight here, and I got to go back out there at 10 o'clock tonight, which I'll probably be there till midnight. Then I got to go back to the shop. He's lack of sleep, Sarah's like, I don't want to yeah, I know, I know, and you're making got, me twitch. And then, <laughs> gotta, like, stressing. and then I got to load stuff into my personal truck, come home, get enough sleep, and then get up to drive back out to Louisville by like 9. Mm-hmm. And it just... Yeah. It's like constant going, and I, my brain just was like, "Ah, oh, you're used to it." Yeah. And my body goes, "No, you're not." I know. <laughs> no. Yeah, it catches up with you eventually. It's like I had a 
a uh, mastermind I was in this past weekend, started Thursday night, went through Saturday, and we were on Dubai time. Mm -hmm. So my eight o'clock was there 5 a.m. So I, yep. I went from eight to midnight the first night, which going to bed at midnight and getting up at five in the morning, not recommended. I was back up at four the next morning, so I had like three hours of sleep. Oh. Didn't sleep very well because I drank green tea, right, to, to help myself stay up. So then I was yep. up. Caffeine. <laughs> got up, went back and stayed in there till like noon that day. And I was like nodding off, took a nap. And we'd do that same pattern again. By Sunday, I felt like I had freaking jet lag. Yep. I was like, oh my gosh. But then I didn't want to, you know, like I don't want to sleep in because I don't like to mess my sleep routine. Because to me, that's worse than just trying to go to oh, bed yeah. a little earlier and make sure I just get up, you know. Yep. So doing better now. But I agree with you on that sleep thing. It's, it's, it's important. It and, is important. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so let's talk about this because you got all this stuff. I mean, we could be here forever talking about that, but we got to talk about other things too because that's important <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> I want to talk about okay, going into this entrepreneur space because mm -hmm. you kind of talked about moving into that. So maybe what do you feel like was like, the, I guess, maybe the biggest challenge moving into this, you know, starting this business and kind of just going on your own? Um, really kind of carving my own path. Mm -hmm. And there were so many different times that I was like, yeah, I'm, this is, I'm exhausted. Yeah. You know, why Why do I feel the need to just keep, like, moving forward, keep stepping forward? But I really, really, really wanted just to share my journey so other people didn't have to go through, you know, all of the, the dead ends and all of the challenges that I did just to make sure that their kids live, like, a happy, healthy life. Yeah. And when we moved here to Dallas, I was like, oh. Like, again, seriously, I've got to start over. This is, you know, maybe this is the time when I, um, I, you know, I give up. And then I just, I happened into Dr. Allison Henderson's office because um, I got a referral for a pediatrician. And, like, the heavens opened and the angels sang. Like, she is amazing. Not only is she incredibly holistic-minded, but she's also just really, really supportive of whole body health. And when I graduated with my PhD, she's like, why don't you, you know, why don't you come and work with us? Mm. And that has really just got moved from just having my own practice to actually creating the Family Wellness Center of Dallas, yeah. where we can not only help the, pedi the, the peds, the pediatric side, but the entire family. Because you know we can say, okay, great, like, you need to take gluten out of your, you know, out of your, right. out of your diet. But if four of the people at the table are eating gluten, there's no way that's going to happen. So just really taking a holistic approach to better family wellness, and. Um, see how that looks and yeah. make that a reality. I like it. I like it. Well, and I, yeah, and I think that it, it's almost the difference, you know, when you when you find, like, those are your people. I say those are mm -hmm. our people, right, yeah. when you find them. Because I feel like when you have those conversations with people that just don't really, they either don't want to hear that or they just don't get it, it's almost, like, hard to have those conversations. You know what I mean? So you have to find your, I feel like, find your people. But I'm almost fascinated by this stuff because I, I understand the, the value in, you know, I would say, Food is like the gasoline you put in your car, you know. And the thing about a I car, use that analogy all yeah, the time. Yeah, the thing about your car, and I talk about this. I actually had this conversation with my, I, I don't know who it was, I think it was my mom, when I was talking about that sphincter otomy, because she's like, well, I thought that healed you. And I'm like, no, I'm not a car. You can't just replace the belt. Like, it's mm -hmm. broken, it's broken. And once it's broken, now you have a snip inside your body where they've actually cut a piece of something out. It's not working the way it did before. You know, they're just trying to now make it where you can function you know, and so the food is so important because it, you know, you put bad gas in the car and you're, I mean, the good thing about a car, at least you can replace parts of right. it. You ain't replacing parts in the body, right? No. Like pancreas goes bad, it's bad. Gallbladder mm -hmm. goes bad, it's bad, you know. Yep. Well, no, like to touch on one of the things you said about when one person has something and, but everyone else isn't eating it, mm -hmm. it that's hard for me. So pre getting married, um, mm -hmm. I was alone for years. So it was easier for me to, hey, I don't want any sugar in the house. I don't want this in the house. I'm going to eat this way. And I did. I went from 387 pounds down to 268. Wow. And I'm back up to like 295. And <laughs> I blame COVID. But, you know, <laughs> I can't blame COVID. It's my... And, and the thing is... is We're the, past and, COVID. And, <laughs> right, and, my, and, and Teresa makes perfectly good sense. She's like, well, you know... I crave this every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Scotty craves this every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I try to explain to her, I was like, I crave it all, all of the, the time. time. Yep. So when I see it, it I'm going to eat it. Yeah. It's, like, it's not like, so you, mm -hmm. if there's a way to hide it from me, don't let me know it's in the house, don't eat it in front of me. But I can't ask that because that's just a, a odd yeah. ask. 
but it's difficult for me because I, if I, it's yes. hard for me. Mm-hmm. And keto was great for me. Yeah. I felt better than I've ever felt in mm-hmm. my entire life. So it's hard, though, when you have other people around you that are, like you oh, said, yeah. doing that. And you're like, oh, I really want to eat all that rice and pasta, but I can't. Mm-hmm. Just, I use it. It's difficult. It's really a struggle. A big it is. time. It is. And... Like I, you know, I'll sit down across from, you know, a teenager and they'll look at me and they're like, are you going to tell me I can't ever have sugar again? And as much as I would love to say, that is absolutely your best choice. Right. I like, be realistic. Be realistic. No. Yeah. Because yeah. we need to find a way to just make small changes, mm-hmm. you know, systematically mm-hmm. make small changes mm-hmm. to get you up to a place where you feel better. Like mm-hmm. if that's, okay, let's, great, you know. Let's find a way to make that cake that you can eat it, whether it's like gluten-free flour, whether it's like, you know, monk fruit for sweetener, whether it's honey. Let's just find a way to make healthier choices to get you closer to where you want to be. I can't, like even with my own children, like I have a son who's allergic to red food coloring. Talk about something that is hard to figure out and it's in everything. Like you can't tell, so school, right? They candy is a reward for everything. You know, people bring like Frosties and cupcakes mm-hmm. and M mm-hmm. and M's and Twizzlers, and you know he's old enough now that he knows. But even like even that is a challenge, and he <laughs> he gets in trouble if he eats red. It's like the Tasmanian Devil meets like Hellboy, and mm-hmm. he knows it's coming on. <laughs> but like it's no, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Oh, yeah. But like you know, small like s- s- just such a small thing can yeah. make such a huge difference and yeah. so um yeah you, you have to find a substitute you have to find a happy middle yeah. yeah that gets into that whole like the brain thing you know because when you were talking about those small changes because mm-hmm. that's the part that i work with people on is how to adopt those small changes yes. like the people that give them because you know it takes really the reason that we struggle with that so much is because Whatever we, however we grew up in those first X number of years mm-hmm. of our lives are sort of cemented in there. And the problem with that is later on down, like in order to unconsciously release something, it takes like two to five years of changing to get mm-hmm. to a place where you no longer think about it, right? Like, so I always use exercising for me as the example because I didn't really grow up playing sports and, and exercising. My mom did it, but it wasn't like kind of this staple in our house. But I started teaching aerobics when I, after I had... Actually, I started doing ropes, but I started teaching right after my oldest daughter was born. And I did that for seven years. So I got to a place where it just sort of started becoming Mm -hmm. part of me. But it wasn't until when I was diagnosed with my nerve condition that I used it as a tool to help me get through the pain. And I did Mm -hmm. it every single day. And that's why I started running. And so now I don't even really think about, like, you know, you talk about the sugar and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really even negotiate that conversation anymore. Like, I don't really even crave sugar anymore. I used to, like, every day, like, I needed it all day long, you know? Mm-hmm. And now I'm at a place where it's not really a, a weapon for me anymore. And so that's why when you're talking about those small changes, it's because it takes a long time it, for us to, yeah, to condition. Yeah, I, mean, I remember even, like, because I love queso and I love salsa and I love it and you can't use chips so I mean I used to take celery with me everywhere mm-hmm. and I would just so good. celery and, and queso. queso and celery and I could do it with everything I was like all right I could this is something I can do yeah. I still get the crunch I still get the taste you I get want the cheese. yeah so yeah. I I'm I am one sucker though for <laughs> chips and salsa yeah, that's my guilty pleasure. I love, and we go every Friday night to get chips and salsa. But have you seen, Have you watched the show Only Murders in the Building? Yes. No. <gasps> How Martin Short just loves you dips. Have to. Oh, dips. Yes. Dips. dips. Mine is hummus. His hummus. I, yes. I like dips too. I just love chips. I'm like, just I don't need anything. Just bring me all your all the chips and all the salsa, please, and I'm in heaven. It's all good. So um, COVID. I was craving that crunch, and I actually lost my taste and smell during okay. COVID. And so I, Takis, I can feel them mm-hmm. when I eat them. Mm-hmm. And we had all this hummus. Takis and hummus. Takis and Takis. It sounds off. It's really I yummy. can see my kids doing that. They both like Takis, Takis and they like hummus. Yes. I can tell them doing it's that. It's good. Mm, interesting. It's good. Good stuff. That's a lot of good information. I like it. Good stuff. <laughs> we just learned about Takis and hummus. <laughs> Learn something new every time we do this podcast. Takis, and, takis beer. Yeah. yeah. Is there really Takis beer? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Because it's like the micheladas, so it's the hot Takis mm-hmm. with beer. I don't know how they do it, but I saw it and I was like, ooh, that sounds really good. Ooh. I'll have to 
Like we got totally off track. Sorry, I'm totally 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 the the hey, that's, I'm hey listen, way. this is like a people podcast. You know, we can do anything goes on here. We, maybe we could just rename it like Potpourri Podcast or something. You know, like whatever happens happens on this show. It's all good. We learned good. We're talking about healthy foods, and then we got on to beer and talkies. Beer and talkies. It's hey. good stuff. Good stuff. I had a question. I totally lost it in there for a minute. So, but so, you are doing awesome stuff, Sarah. So, what kind of you're seeing all age ranges, right? Little people, big people, all kinds of people. We do awesome. We do. Very cool. Yeah, because I'll, I'll sit down with a kiddo, and then the mom will be like, well, I, I have a question. Do you do you, yeah. see, you see moms too? And, again, sometimes I'm a little slow on the uptake. It was, you know, after the 10, 20 moms, I'm like, you know, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I would love to help you too. Awesome. So, What have you learned in this journey about yourself going through all this? Um, What have I learned about myself? Uh, to trust, probably just to trust the journey. Mm. Like, for it was, like it. it was tough for a really long time, but just I finally just – I, don't, I didn't give it up, but I just kind of like turned it over. You know, I'm like, yeah. I will be where I am supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. So just trust in that. And see, look, I get accused of being woo-woo. That's a little woo-woo. I like but. it. No, but no, <laughs> we, no. And that's exactly what I talk about. I mean, I think that things happen for the reason that they happen. Mm-hmm. We don't, I don't even do. look. I think you put yourself in the right place and you do have to trust the process because so many people get hung up on, on everything has to be like this pattern and here's what I always say this I have a mentor and this is one of the biggest things I learned there is nothing linear in life the only thing linear is that we're going to die yep. there's nothing linear about life the weather's not even linear nothing is linear and when you recognize <laughs> yeah. this I mean think about this when you recognize this yeah. and you take that into your own journey then you can really sit back and reflect and go okay as sucky as that may have been it needed to be there for a reason exactly you know and that's what I always say about my stuff I mean I'm like you know, I, I always look back and I, I go, you know, are these things that I wish didn't happen? Well, yes and no. I mean, it sucked that they had to happen, but that's what got me where I am today. Exactly. You know? And so I think exactly. it's all good. I think being woo is fun sometimes. <laughs> we came up with a new a fun word in the last show. You can be pixie dust every once in a while, you know. I, I like, like pixie that. dust. Was that what I said? Pixie dust or fairy dust or something? I like it, you know. We can't be pragmatic all the time, right? No, that's not fun. It's all good. It's all good, Sarah. All right, this has been fun. I think we can sit here for a while. I think we need to. Seriously, we could have. Like I know we need to do some. Hour let's podcast. do some. Let's do some more fun questions. I think let's go to the fun. We always do these rapid fire. Okay, hence there's there's supposed to be rapid fire. Uh, we need a new, we need a new name for rapid. rapid fire because just, they're never rapid. Just fun questions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they're, they're fun questions. Although we're not having fun now, but they're fun questions. You got something you want to start with, or you want me to start? Ooh. Let's okay, see. and I just answer with the first you thing can, that comes to mind. You can do whatever you want. I can do the rapid fire. Bring she's it like, on. She's like, I for her <laughs> first concert. My very first concert, um, it was either Jan and Dean or Beach Boys. Ooh. Okay. I like both of those. Yeah, Beach Boys. I'm going to start singing. Very cool. Okay, you're going to love this one. Favorite guilty pleasure food. Favorite guilty pleasure food is either chocolates or I'm sad to say it's soda. I mm. love Coca Cola, and Coca-Cola. I, I have one so long. like I don't have any vices, but Coca Cola is a vice. Really, that's so funny. I have not had one, but you know, when I used to run, because I would do a lot of trail races. See, this is where we don't we get off the rapid fire. When I used to do trail <laughs> races, I would like because they would have aid stations. They're different yeah. than like road races because yeah. they'd have a lot. Of, they, and yeah. their aid stations actually had food. It wasn't yes. just like drinks but so they would have like Mountain Dew or like Dr. and I would mm. always come to one of those tables and I'd want Dr. Pepper so bad. I never drink Dr. Pepper's but when I'd run I'd be like I need that I need that crispy yep you I love get, the effervescence of the bubbles Zevia. Zevia. I do buy Zevia I do drink Zevia I, drink, I, I do. yeah I drink that too I do drink it cream soda is my favorite that's my favorite too <laughs> you know no 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 that's my favorite <laughs> so that's the green can right nope or is it the no, brown can yellow, gold, it's gold like gold can. yellow yes okay. it yeah. is so good yes could you yeah. you could probably pour that over like healthy like get you some keto ice cream pour it over ice cream <gasps> like oh, a, so, make a float so, so I have float. tried keto ice cream it is it's not, not even remote it's like you it's know which like one you need to get cardboard. Um, there's one brand that's pretty good don't do Halo Top I don't like Halo Top yeah, there is so yeah, awful. Halo Tops I know people like it I'm like I did buy some the other day I was at Tom Thumb and I bought some and it was supposed to be like chocolate chip cookie dough and I mm-hmm. go to it's lactose free low no like no sugar I open it up and I'm like I think I just need some ice cream. There's no, I can't even taste it. It tastes like paper. There's nothing there. But there is a brand that I like, and I'm drawing a blank on which one. They have it at Sprouts. I'm forgetting the name of it. It is actually pretty good. Their cookies and cream is really good. 
Um, they got a cup. I did a whole video on it with my friend one day. We were test tasting them all. So, I mean, I'm one of those guys that if I go down any aisle, peanut butter anything. I have, They have a peanut I butter. I love peanut, peanut butter. butter. Crunchy or smooth? Both. Really? I will take both. Crunchy. Any, crunchy. Peanut, it has I will to take crunchy. peanut butter. I will crunchy. take peanut butter any way I can get it. And like we were walking down the aisle the other day, and, and, and Teresa started laughing at me, because I, I won't even be looking at it. The corner of my eye, I'll be able to see peanut butter. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> peanut butter. Hey, that, there's there's a new hey. There's a new Ben and Jer- uh, there's a new Ben and Jerry's peanut butter. It's <laughs> all peanut butter, and she's butter. like. And she's like, you know, you still have diabetes. I was like, yeah, I don't even care right now. It's peanut, peanut butter. butter. I'm going to find you that ice cream, the brand. I know it's at Sprouts. I used to buy it all the time. And for whatever reason, I can't think of the name, but it's better than Halo Top. And it actually does taste kind of like ice cream. It's pretty good. Kind of like. Yeah. I mean, like not, you're not, it's You're not gonna, such a good sale. It's not going to be like, a, well, it's not going to be like a blue bell, but it with. does, it tastes better than Halo Top and it doesn't taste like paper. <laughs> there you you know, like and that. that's, that's a good. That's good. Right? Yeah. As we're, long we're, as my ice cream doesn't taste like paper, I'm happy. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, I got to, you, you have another question? So I'm going to ask no, her one good. more. I got to laugh and now. This could be the best podcast. We just have no seriousness at all. All right, so I know you just got back from Li- Liberia. It? Liberia, yeah. yes. yes. Okay, I'm going to ask you this question then. Nope. Maybe favorite travel destination. Ooh, favorite travel destination actually is here in the U.S. And, I, yeah. That's cool. Of all the continents and all the countries, um, India is lovely. Um, New Zealand, fantastic. Mm. But... If my like my happy place was Sanibel Island, Florida, and it Ooh. just got wiped off the map. Oh yeah, they have, yeah. So I don't know when I'm gonna get to go back to my happy place. My son's actually in Florida right now in Jacksonville, so I guess that side they were okay over there. But yeah, it was kind of a sad it thing is. going on there. So it is. So if you ever get the chance, check it Sanibel out. Yeah. Island, yes. Okay. I like Florida. I do like Florida. One more time. Sanibel Island. Sanibel in Florida. Island. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like Florida. I haven't been there, but I do like Florida. Oh, second, cool. probably, since I was kind of a Debbie Downer. Uh, this is second <laughs> one, probably. Sorry, I just really, no, it's, no, it's oh. okay. It's all good. Um, oh. Probably, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably Galway, Ireland. Oh, she's been some cool places. Definitely. Cool. Yeah, yes. Very cool. Kind of a gypsy. You are a little bit. I like it, though. Yeah, I like it's it. Fun. fun. I liked fun. out and was able to live everywhere. So, I mean, not everywhere, but. I live in Singapore, Australia, Japan. Yeah, you've been cool places, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Australia's fun. Off nice. the coast of Malaysia, there's an island called Tioman Island. Mm-hmm. Yes, I've heard of it. Oh, my God. It's so pretty. I mean, literally, you can... can you do s- that again? Yes. <laughs> you can literally see, like, the sea floor. That's how oh, clear awesome. the water it's is. Awesome. And it's awesome. It's just awesome. It's awesome. Uh, very cool. Well, this has been fun. It's been this has been a great episode. I'm excited. It's been fun today. Yes, we were a little lighthearted. No seriousness yeah, it was a today. A lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, Sarah, if our audience wants to want to learn a little bit more about what you're doing, what you've got going on, where do we want to send them? Uh, you can check us out on Facebook. Okay. Um, it's Dr. Sarah Evie Clark. Okay. Um, TheWellnessMama.com is where you can find me online. But yeah, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. I have a bunch of little mindfulness I'm minutes. Find you. Just <laughs> you're gonna find me. I'm gonna find you. It's uh, yeah, just trying to share as much information as possible in a fun way. Cause I, I like, like to the have Wellness fun. Mama. I think that's great. And just for everyone watching, Jennifer's tongue is working today. It's just having some trouble. <laughs> it's having trouble. <laughs> I, maybe I didn't get any chocolate today. I don't know. <laughs> when Brianna would always bring her little bag of. Oh, I know she brings us treats all the time. I didn't bring any treats. I just got the Gatorade today. Yes. No, my no sugar Gatorade today. No, no, this has been fun. So we do, of course, want to say to our audience, if you enjoy our podcast, please be sure you give us a rating on both iTunes and Facebook. We can't do this without you. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And we want to leave you with a final thought. In order to live the extraordinary, you must start. And every start begins with a decision. You guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We will see you next time. 